Hello, everyone. Now let, let's understand DHCP, which is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So we're going to see what's happening at the back end if I try to start my computer. Now I have two ways to assign IP address. So one is where I give it a static IP. So I go to network settings, network and sharing, and then you know I will have a small icon. I'll go to network sharing. I'll go to IPv4. Right click, go to properties, and that's where where I force an IPv4 address. That is static IP address. But sometimes if I have a lot of computers in my network, and I want all the IP addresses to be managed by my DHCP server. So it has got some other advantage also, but let's assume I'm using a concept of DHCP. So what will happen when I start my computer? Let's assume I have two servers in my network. So one is DHCP server one and other is DHCP server two. So when I start my computer, it's going to send first packet. This is discovery. So this is what we call DHCP discovery. So that means my PC is going to send first packet. It's going to search for a server in the network. Now, this is a broadcast message. It is a message which is going to every server saying that I need my IP address and I need some other settings. Please provide me. So whoever is DHCP server in this network, please provide me these settings. So let's assume you know I have two servers here. Now the message goes to this server. It also goes to this server. So this is my first message as a broadcast. DHCP discovery, this is a broadcast message. Now the nearest server, which is near to me, this server is going to respond me with a second packet. This is going to be offer. It is a unique cost message, offer coming from this server. So now, it could also happen that I might getting, I might be getting offer from this server also. So there'll be a problem then because if I receive two IP addresses, that means I will have a duplicate. I will receive two IP addresses. So to avoid that concept, what happens here? When I get an offer from this server one, so the offer will have an IP address. It will say shake. This is your IP address subnet mask, default gateway, DNS server. So it's going to give me an offer and it is going to be a unicost message. That means the second message will come directly to me. Now, third message is going from my PC. So this third message is request. So I am sending a request to this system saying that, yes, I accept your offer but this request goes as a broadcast. So that means this request goes to other server also as a broadcast. Why it needs to go to other server saying that Mr. Server, Mr. Server two, you don't need to worry. I'm already getting offer from someone. So I'm requesting that person. So you can come out of picture. You don't need to worry. So this is to avoid duplicate address. That is where it is a broadcast message. So this server will come out of the picture. This server will think that I'm already getting offer from server one, so I don't need to worry. Otherwise, you know, what will happen is I might get some duplicate address. So this broadcast message is going to reduce that, is, is going to remove that actually. Now what will happen? The last message is a kind of an acknowledgement, which comes from a server one. So this is the fourth message, acknowledgement. So server one says that Mr. Sheikh, I have given you an IP address. This is my pool. So my pool starts from 3.1 till 3.40. So I have 40 IPs in my pool. I am going to give you 192.168.3.2. Then it will make a note that I have given 3.2 to shake for a lease. Seven or eight days. By default, we can change this also. So that means once half the lease expires, so let's assume it is eight days. So after four days, my system is going to again repeat the same process. So I might be getting same IP if I have just shut down my computer for maybe a few hours, then I might be getting the different IP. So when I request again for the IP address, server will check, you know, do I have the same IP? Then I will give to shake. If not, I might be giving him a different IP. 
Now, what will happen here? A lot of attacks are possible here. So one is DSP starvation attack. So starvation attack means I can generate some fake request. I can use a lot of tools like YER, S-A-N-I-E-R, there's a tool which I can use or any other tool. So I can generate fake 40 requests because I know the pool is 40 IPs. So I can generate fake 40 requests. Then I can exhaust this pool. This is known as starvation attack, DSCP starvation. So other attack which can happen is rogue server. So what I can do is I can bring a second server as a rogue server. So after ex exhausting this pool, my PC might go to the second server. So what if this is a rogue server, which an attacker can launch here, pretending to be you know, a server in the network. So these are two possible attacks. And this process is what we call DORA, DORA process. DSCP discovery, offer, request, acknowledgement, this is going to be broadcast, unicast, broadcast, unicast. So this is what we call the DCP DORA process. I hope it's clear. So if there's any doubt or any other comments you have on this video, do let me know. Thank you.